それでは次の講演を始めさせていただきます続きましては機械学習インフラストラクチャの脆弱性についてセルゲイ・ゴリチック様よりご講演いただきますセルゲイさんは過去にコードブルーでも講演経験のあるロシア出身のセキュリティの専門家ですポジティブテクノロジーを含め数多くの大企業での実務経験を持ちます現在はアラブ首長国連邦の企業で AI とセキュリティをリードしておりますセルゲイさんから今回のテーマについての動画をいただいておりますどうぞご覧くださいコードブルースタッフとチームを作成しているこのようなコンプレックスコンディションです。私は、私の会社のハッキングオーディセイグループを作成しているこのようなコンプレックスコンディションです。私は、私の会社のハッキングオーディセイグループを作成しているこのようなコンプレックスコンディションです。私は、私の会社のハッキングオーディセイグループを作成しているこのようなコンプレックスコンディションです。私は、私の会社のハッキングオーディセイグループを作成しているこのようなコンプレックスコンディションです。私は、私の会社のハッキングオーディ AI powered CCTV system.、Uh, we call this project Big Brother. Part of our team to understand how to hack such an AI based system d e c i d e to、uh, prepare adversarial example for the video system. I think most of you know what is adversarial example.、Uh, this is a way to spoof input to the、uh, neural network in a very specific way, which will、uh, cause the neural network to. Misclassificate object. For example, you can put sticker on the image of banana, and the neural network will do incorrect classification and say that this actually a toaster. Adversarial examples exist also for the video objects.、Uh, for example, if you have a classifier which、uh, d e t e c t a different、uh, object on the video. And next, do classification like persona, chair, etc. etc.、Uh, you can create a very specific adversarial example、uh, which will fool this classifier and make an invisible man, as you can see on this、uh, video. So, part of our team d e c i d e to work on the、uh, adversarial example for the specific machine learning. And actually, we, we were successful in this、uh, story, but our team d e c i d e to be professional. And、uh, start from the basic, start from the physical security. So、uh, we took the credit card, f i n d the location of one center, data center, s which、uh, p r o c e s s video information from this system, and、uh, use a very simple trick to open the door. Once we get physical access,、uh, we found that the cameras, which IP cameras,、uh, connected.、Uh, To the main video management system with very bad physical security. So, actually, what we did, we just took this RG45 cable,、uh, plug it into our laptops, and do hacking as usual. So, very quickly, we were able to get access to video management system next to the network infrastructure, next to the actually all these AI components, and we are able to do misclassification, spoofing, invisible man without any AI magic. Why I told you this story? Because I want to highlight that actually AI is a not a spherical code traveling in Waku. AI is based on the infrastructure, and this infrastructure is super important for secure AI application. But what is AI infrastructure? How we can define an AI infrastructure? Because we are very practical people, we decide to start practical assessment and We decide to scan all those internets to find different components which are related to AI and next somehow classify it. To do this, we use Grindr framework. Grindr framework was developed by our team for SD1 security research. It was also presented on the、uh, Code Blue、uh, a couple years ago. And、uh, Grindr framework is a Actually, Grindr. It scans all the internets using、uh, Shodan, Census, and uh, other uh, scanners and c o l l e c t information which next you can use for detailed fingerprint and vulnerability research.、Uh, using Grindr framework, we built AI finger project 
which is collection of the different AI related components connected to the internet. And we do periodic scan and publishing on Git uh, so you can download, analyze and uh, classify these uh, objects. Uh, here the list of the different AI related components uh, which we can detect uh, started from framework, databases, uh, different message queue, speech recognition engines, etc. etc. This list is open. If you want to contribute, please contribute. Here you can see a map uh, of the world and actually Japan with a list or the numbers of the AI related components uh, detected across the world. Uh, it's obvious that uh, North America, especially US and China are on the top, followed by Europe and the uh, rest of the world. And you can find that there are thousands and thousands of uh, AI related components connected directly to the internet. So what we can find there, first is databases. I think you know that databases is a new goal and data is a actually basic of AI. If you can find data set, annotated data, you can build your own model. And in most cases, for example, in medical AI, this databases contains very, very sensitive information. Dockers. Uh, for sure, Dockers is a cool thing and everyone uses it right now. Uh, but uh, if you uh, don't have proper management of the Dockers, especially Kubernetes or something like this, different management engines, uh, you can steal actually the model uh, without any serious efforts. Different AI related uh, engines and management platform, uh, for example, like NVIDIA Digit, uh, so you can uh, manage annotation data, you can uh, start your uh, experiments, you can uh, train the model here. Uh, so NVIDIA Digit is a very powerful tool, but unfortunately there is no security at all in this tool. And if you connect directly to the internet, uh, it's easy to find it, get the annotated data, uh, extract your model and do anything what you want. Tensorboard. Uh, Tensorboard, uh, it's also a very popular uh, AI uh, development platform. And uh, the TensorFlow server uh, also contains uh, annotated data, uh, model, model development pipeline, model code by itself, and uh, different uh, part of experiment. Uh, so it's easy to find it across the internet. It's hundreds across the internet and most of them are alive so they actually run experiments model development process training right now uh, uh, kubeflow kubeflow is a, a kubernetes uh, management uh, engine related to the ai like tensorflow plus uh, kubernetes and uh, we found hundreds of the uh, kubeflow across the internet so actually if you connect to Kubeflow, you can manage dozens or hundreds of dockers and uh, data and uh, information. We published this uh, information uh, several um, months ago and unfortunately looks like hackers are better than uh, security guys. And in June 2020, uh, Microsoft uh, report that uh, they detected large-scale campaign against Kubernetes and Kubeflow clusters uh, to abuse exposed Kubernetes. So, this threat is real and hackers already exploited it. Uh, this was a funny story first, but during our discovery, we decided to, focus, to be focused on the specific things like machine learning service. Uh, what is a machine learning service? In most cases, it's like uh, just a server with some specific uh, hardware like GP, GPU, uh, general purpose uh, GPU cards, and uh, these servers can be uh, used for model development, for training, or for inference. During our discovery, uh, we found uh, one server which have NVIDIA inside in uh, its response. But during detailed analysis, we understood that this uh, Tesla V100 uh, card was used for cryptocurrency mining. So using uh, GPGPU in 2019 for cryptocurrency mining looks like a bad job, but still it was very interesting information for us because we understood that there are some uh, machine learning uh, servers in the internet and we decided 
to uh, dig deeper. First of all, we decide to be focused on the specific target. Uh, this is DJX1, NVIDIA DJX1 is a uh, very cool rig with 8 Tesla V100 and uh, it's cost about more than 100 uh, USD, uh, 100,000 USD, sorry. And this device have very good hash cat rate. So actually, if you wanted uh, to want to use it to uh, brute force passwords, it's very good choice but a very expensive choice. So we decide to check the documentation user manual of this uh, thing and we found that uh, by default uh, DJX1 use a very interesting password like uh, QCT admin and QCT admin for the uh, different configurations. Uh, and we uh, using Griner start the internet scan for the SNMP with uh, this uh, community string. And fortunately, we found several dozens of the servers which have uh, SNMP connected uh, to the internet, which use this QCT admin uh, community string and also have Tesla V100 on board and respond that way at DJX1. Hooray! Yeah. So uh, once we found one of these boxes, we decide to uh, scan it uh, in details and we found that on the port 623 there is a IPMI server. Uh, IPMI is well known BMC management standard, out of bound inter management standard, which have well known vulnerabilities uh, including a password hash disclosure and we just quickly checked it with the MSFT and we found that actually yes, there is a password uh, hash disclosure vulnerability. But this is a very known story uh, because uh, like many vendors have um, IPMI 2.0 enabled uh, in their uh, BMCs uh, and in most cases we don't want to fix it. Here an example of reporting to the other vendor uh, about this vulnerability and the response like guys you should use a complex password. But how complex passwords can help you if the server return to you the hash of the password, which you can easily brute force. But still, okay, this uh, not a vulnerability, this specific standard, it just gives you a password back. Next, during our discovery, we found very strange certificate. Uh, use it for uh, SSL communication, SSL TLS communication uh, by this box. Uh, this certificate was used, uh, issued by Quanta Computers not by NVIDIA. Why? Interesting question. Uh, it's used uh, quite short uh, RSA key, like uh, uh, 128 bytes, and it was used on April 2017, actually before uh, DJX become uh, the big thing. Looks like this certificate is hard-coded because we were able to find a certificate with same serial number over the internet. But to check this hypothesis, we need to get the something real one uh, to run static analysis. Uh, because we have no access to the uh, DJX1 at the moment, we understood that actually BMC, which uh, is on the uh, DJX1, is uh, similar to the quanta computer BMC. And we found this on the internet uh, and did some small work on the extraction with Binwalk, 7-zip, and that's it. Next, we just grabbed it for the uh, certificate across this firmware. And we found that, yes, actually, certificate and the uh, private key is hard-coded and located in the firmware. And it's same for all instances of the DJXs and also uh, quantum computer uh, BMC. Uh, so, using this certificate, you can easily decrypt any uh, encrypted communication with this uh, out-of-band management interface. Uh, so, the grep is a very powerful thing, so we decided to grab more, and we found that there is a, uh, some configuration file which looks like an ETC shadow, and in this configuration file, you can find the sysadmin user with hash of the password. This salted hash, but hooray, guys, we have DJX1 and actually we can use it uh, to brute force this password very quickly. But before start brute forcing, we decide just to Google for the password 
and we found that actually this well-known username and uh, this sysadmin have a super user password and actually it's hard-coded so you uh, have it over time when this uh, set up the system no kidding uh, so we use this uh, password to uh, log into the system and actually yes uh, we got the root privileges and can do uh, both static and uh, dynamic analysis for vulnerabilities also we found very interesting uh, case uh, that there are several password storage uh, on the box uh, not only traditional Unix uh, etc pass uh, WD and the uh, ETC shadow, but also IPMI passwords stored in the different database and looks like this database encrypted. So this encryption. Uh, to decrypt this encryption, uh, we just do a quick reverse engineering and found the encryption key uh, read it from the file conf PWD, uh, PWD and key. We found this file and the uh, mega rack password and this password actually works uh, works so we able to decrypt uh, the algorithm is blowfish so what is uh, mega rack i think many of you know it this america mega training bias uh, name or bmc name interesting hit so what we're learning from this exercise uh, if you want to build very secure out of band management interface uh, please don't use one uh, way hashing we've sold. Use plain text password encryptions. Uh, password encryption key should be hard coded and stored in the same folder as a user database, just to you know to prevent the mess. Uh, and this is very important to keep it uh, like a product name. Don't try to create the random uh, password encryption keys. Uh, and please store it in several places across the file system because maybe you can lose one file or something and you're unable to de uh, decrypt password. This is very important hint from the very expensive device. Uh, next finding was hard-coded RC4 keys in uh, GViewer SOC. What is GViewer? It's actually KVM, uh, Remote Management Interface, which allow you to get access to the uh, screen and keyboard. And uh, uh, this uh, encryption, it encryption where uh, use RC4, which is like secure, and uh, also initialization vector for RC4 is hard coded in the code, and uh, like you can decrypt any communication uh, between the uh, BMC uh, and the admin. Uh, also, we found that. Uh, for encryption uh, in uh, array KP, it's a protocol uh, used by IPMI. Uh, also, insecure random number uh, generator is used. So, uh, using some magic uh, or luck, uh, you can uh, predict state of the uh, random number uh, generator and uh, also decrypt information. It's not very practical attack, but from uh, uh, Cipher and implementation perspective is like not good. For sure, there are a lot of uh, web vulnerabilities where um, I don't want to uh, go to detail, but just give you an example the list of uh, CSRF issues detected uh, in this BMC. Uh, you can say CSRF is not vulnerability, yes, by itself, but uh, you can use it uh, to mount other attacks. For example, we found that the uh, you can change uh, sync image key. Sync image key use it to sign the image of the BMC for update. And using CFRF, CSRF, you can upload actually any uh, private key to the system. And next, upload any firmware which not signed by the vendor. So this like combination of two vulnerabilities, but. It's allow you to mount very serious attack to spoof the firmware, BMC firmware on the server, which cost more than 100,000 USD. Serious stuff. Found unrestricted fine upload vulnerability, which also can be exploited uh, through the CSRF. Uh, so there are a specific function which uh, receive a file and does not check properly check the file path. So you uh, actually can put specific file into any 
place of the file system and uh, we decide just to override uh, uh, shadow file uh, to create additional user uh, with known password and next we can uh, develop the attack so let's uh, check how it works you can see on the video but uh, first we uh, emulate uh, CSRF condition we get the uh, token uh, cookie which uh, allows to authenticate on the server uh, next we uh, prepare the file with uh, pass, uh, passwd and shadow file with specific hard-coded uh, user and uh, next we send this uh, uh, file to the uh, BMC using uh, known cookie which emulate CSRF uh, condition and uh, next just uh, do uh, SSH login as usual with the evil username Send it now password. Hooray! This is our ID. We are sysadmins, actually root. And uh, we can find everything we want on the server and do everything what we want with the hardware, which cost more than 100,000 USD per each. So here is a list of uh, reported issues. Uh, you can find it online uh, if you need uh, any details. Uh, please ask me, but we are follow responsible disclosure policy, so we will agree every uh, disclosure with vendor. Uh, and also, we found that there are other very interesting uh, DJX boxes like NVIDIA DJX2 or NVIDIA DJX A100, which even more expensive uh, than DJX1. And you can ask me, are any bugs where? But we don't know yet. We don't know. So here you can see the disclosure timeline. Uh, as you can see, the actual patch time is more than one year. So the vulnerabilities were reported to the vendor uh, in the 2019, and it took about one year to fix it. What is the reason? The reason is supply chain, because supply chain is a pain. Actually, the BMC firmware were developed by American uh, Megatrends, and next used by the QCT, who actually developed the board for the NVIDIA. So if you want to fix vulnerability, you should work with all these vendors to make it fix it. And as you can see on the right, uh, actually other vendors have similar BMC and have similar vulnerabilities. So also you should coordinate your disclosure with those vendors. Uh, from my perspective, big things does not mean good security. Uh, good AI researchers are by bad uh, cybersecurity pro and you can find a lot of very important things across the internet without any security. Uh, all vulnerabilities are important because you can use chain of vulnerabilities to mount very serious attack. Uh, supply chain is a pain and grinder is a very cool thing, so use it in your research. Also, I want to highlight uh, our research from Hacking Odyssey Group. Uh, first is uh, infection of AI model by Roman Palkin. Uh, this research uh, demonstrates how you can uh, impl uh, inject malware in the uh, ready-to-use model in the PyTorch, in the uh, Keras, into the TensorFlow. And uh, if someone download your machine learning model and use it, actually his box become infected. And uh, hacking medical imaging. Uh, hacking medical imaging is uh, the research by uh, Maria Nidiak. Uh, and in this research, we demonstrated uh, how different vulnerabilities in DICOM parsing can be used to uh, attack the machine learning pipeline on different stages, uh, stages like a model development, inference, etc., etc. So very interesting researches. We have it uh, online. Uh, you can find slides, you can find video recordings. And uh, 
please contribute if you have any ideas related to such researchers. So what we can do as a society uh, for researchers? I believe that AI cybersecurity is green field. There are a lot of very interesting uh, researchers and uh, please contribute, please hack things, hack AI things, but hack it for good. For enterprises, uh, so don't trust AI anywhere when adversarial input is possible. Input can be even image, which is enough sometimes to bypass the AI things. And please don't forget that AI is not spherical code traveling in vacuum, is related to infrastructure, is related to the servers, is related to the configuration. So follow the best practices. And for governments. So for governments, my message, please annotate data for annotation because you as a government can take responsibility and make it more safe when the research university. And force vendors to follow security best practices from the beginning, not after the incident is happening. And also please detect and control AI-based abuses, which are actually become the big things and will be more and more important so that's it from my side. Thank you for your attention. I am ready to answer your questions. Thank you again.